Hello, I'm Jonathan Ross, a certified personal trainer, brain fitness expert, creator of the Funtensity program, and author of the Alzheimer's Fitness Specialist course. We know that all exercise and physical activity is good for brain health. However, by including a few specific elements and inserting them into exercises that we're already using, we can further enhance the brain health benefits of our physical activity efforts. I have five exercises to show you today with a couple of variations on them as well. And an easy way to remember how to use these concepts in any exercise is to that instead of thinking of just moving on the exercise, we want you to think and then move. We want you to think and then move. We have to have you create a specific variation of a movement and decide what to do next, not automatically, but by choice based on a rule on the exercise. A first example for you is called a clock squat. Now, simply enough, if you were doing this by yourself, you would perform a squat and bring one arm to the 12 and six position. And then every time you rise out of the next squat, you would move your arms in opposition of each other around the clock face. It's just, this is also just so we keep both arms moving and we have an asymmetrical pattern or a sort of a symmetrical pattern with the arms balanced as well. We move around the clock face with each squat. If you were using this as a trainer and coach or facilitating a different response, you can make it reactive where you would verbally call out the hours on the clock and then the client would go to that position with the, the hour hand and then the opposite hand in 180 degrees opposite the hour hand they're going to. So we simply use the hours on this side of the clock for this arm and this side of the clock for the other arm. If you wanted to increase the physical challenge a little bit, you could in introduce some light to very not heavy dumbbells, maybe medium for someone who's very strong because we'd be getting to some overhead positions with dumbbells and we're looking to move the arms pretty straight as we go through that. So we'd want to be mindful of the load that we're putting into the shoulder. So there's the clock squat, really fun activity. It takes a squat and it adds a little bit of thinking as you find the different hours around the clock face. Now a push-up is already hard enough physically, but I'm using the push-up handles for the demonstration of this today. This variation on a push-up though works just as well without anything on the at all, just your hands on the floor. But I'm using the push-up handles just so you can more clearly see on the video the hand positions I'm in. And essentially what will happen is I have to remember to start from, I'll, I'll start from this position. I'll get to the top of the push-up. My next position will be here with an internally rotated arm while this one is still external. As I get to the next one, I would then change to this position. And then as, after the next rep, I would change to this position. And then after I do that one, I would get back to the start position. So I have actually four different positions. One with the shoulders both externally rotated, both internally rotated, and then one of each. So it would look like a normal push-up, and you can use all the different modifications as appropriate for lowering the resistance level by putting one or both knees down. But getting into the push-up position, we find a slight external rotation in the hands is best to start. I perform one rep, and I'll come up and I'll turn that hand to an externally rotated position, and then I'll match it with the other one. So I've got a symmetrical push-up, now I've got asymmetrical, and then I'm back to where I started. So each rep I do here, I have to remember which hand I turn next, what position it goes to. It's not the most difficult cognitive challenge, but because this is a very significant physical challenge, we would, would want to be mindful of making things super challenging on the cognitive side. The next exercise is called a triangle leg raise. Now this is a variation on a leg raise. When I do this, I'm actually going to turn and put my head towards the camera face up so you can more clearly see the movement of my feet and legs. And there's two variations I'll show you. And if you can imagine, this is my feet at the top of the leg raise. As I lower, I'll lower into a triangle and then come down. So I'm inverting the triangle to come up. So think of a triangle coming down like a pyramid, like we would normally see a pyramid, but then it's an inverted pyramid coming up. And then the second variation I'll show you is that we make our legs into the shape of a triangle and we keep one leg with the midline of the body with, and one out to the side. This will make way more sense when you see it, but it was easier to talk facing you, so now you'll get to see it in action. That first variation is done with the legs at the top of a leg raise and we drop down wide, come in and then bring up. Now we're drawing the inverted triangle or pyramid. Now it's coming down and then we bring the feet together back up. 
You just have, have to think about the shape you're drawing. And yes, you could use different shapes like circles and uh, wouldn't want to get too complicated using trapezo trapezoids and rhombuses and all those fun shapes from geometry. Now the second variation starts here and I bring one leg out to the side. So you'll see I now have a triangle formed by my legs. And this would be what would be called a right triangle because I've got a 90 degree angle here. I'd come down and I can stay with this pattern for a few reps, either through memory or by coaching the call out. I'll tell a client when to switch. So they just perform the movement or maybe I have them do two reps each side like I am now and then switching, or we make it reactive where they would then listen to your command on when to switch. So there's two variations on a familiar exercise, a leg raise, where we now have a new one called a triangle leg raise. This next version of the row I'm gonna show you can be done with a kettlebell or a dumbbell, as most rows, I'll use a bench. This can be done with fairly significant load and what I'm doing here, this is going to be a rotation of the hand only on the concentric phase of the lift, meaning I'm pulling in, turning to a supinated grip. I leave it there on the way out. So then when I come in on the next concentric, I'm turning so that I finish with a pronated grip and I leave it there on the way out. With the weight in hand, it looks like this. So I start and I pull, supinated grip stays, Pull to a pronated grip, it stays. Supinated, it stays. Pronated, it stays. Supinated, it stays. Now again, you could use this for a set number of reps before you switch, so now a client has to use short-term memory. One, two, three, four is my switch number. I now switch the grip on rep four, or you just make it alternating, or you make it reactive where you call out the switch. The last variation I have to show you is a lunge stance row, which again can be done with a kettlebell or a dumbbell. And we do this much like we've been doing already. So most of you will already be familiar with the general movement, but we get into a lunge stance row position, perform the exercise for say three reps, because I gave that instruction that we're gonna switch on three reps. We switch and immediately continue the same movement on the other side. You could of course, Add to the challenge by making it an explosive switch with a jump lunge. There's always ways to turn movements up in intensity and down in intensity, both in the physical and in the cognitive challenge. So you can see there's a lot of fun variations using movements you're already mostly familiar with, tweaking and adjusting and including elements of tracking the reps before switching or changing a pattern every repetition or making it reactive with you as the coach calling out instructions on what to change next. So give these a try sometime soon and be sure to experiment with your own variations of familiar exercises as well.